So welcome everybody, welcome to At Song Podcast. The topic for this evening is Sacred Soul Flames. And today is August the 13th, 2024. So we're at the middle of the month now. And um, why do I want to talk about Sacred Soul Flames? Um, because recently I actually, I kind of know about the, the um, so flames, but I never really pay attention to it. And then recently it just felt right that I, I kind of looked at it more more um, closely. And what it is, what it gave, what it does for me is that it actually um, explained a lot of things that I thought, okay, how am I, how come I am like this? You know, I, I and so it actually helped me to um, explain a few, few things about myself and, and made it easier for me to accept myself. So, and it actually um, gave me better understanding of myself and also um, kind of let me know in which areas I need to do better or to improve upon. So that's why I want to actually share share what I've learned and uh, hopefully it would be equally as helpful to all of you and um, it's it's really the sacred flames is kind of a little bit like um, astrology and numerology in the sense that they allow us to through astrology through numerology to get to know ourselves better because you know human beings we we're born into this world and there is no um you know owner's manual that comes with it and then a lot of times we just you know blindly charge ahead and um create the life um one day at a time without knowing really where it is that we are actually heading or you know, what it is that's actually important to us, especially with a lot of these um, happy social programming. So it's very easy to lose ourselves. Whereas knowing things like um, astrology or numerology or um, the, the, the sacred flames, sacred soul flames, is kind of helped us to um, zoom back in because those those things are, they are clues as to what it is that our soul, our highest self, or the, the highest um, level of our soul, actually has in the, like, intended for us to experience when we are here. Um, like we have, we have, we kind of know that, you know, there are experiences that we have signed up for that we want to achieve or to explore in, in each incarnation. But then once we are here, we of course, we don't remember any of that, that um, conversation that we've had with our guides on the other side of the veil. And we are just here trying to figure it out ourselves. And um, not everyone is good at figuring these things out, especially for me, it's like, <laughs> I think part of part of it is because of of the, the my my um the soul flames. That's why I um I'm it's harder for me to figure those things out. I'm more of an easily influenced person. So and it's a good thing and it's a bad thing. So we'll talk more about that later on. So that's why I want to bring up this topic. So what are sacred soul flames? There are there are different names for it. Some people just call it um, sacred flames. Um, and then I, I added the word soul flames because that for me, that's what they are. They really are. So why flames? Why the word flames? It's because they are, they are an energy because flame is a fire. It's something that really burns within you. And that's kind of what, these flames are like they are a signature or a soul frequency. Um, 
I should say it's a band of frequency. It's not just one frequency, whereas it's a band. And they have been um, described as different colors. So they, there's the red, there's orange, yellow, blue, green, um, violet, white, pink. I don't know whether I've missed any of it. Anyways, so there are all together, there are actually many, many different um, colors of this sacred flames that is within our soul. So they are, they can, can be understood as energies that our higher self before we incarnate have decided that we needed these energies within to be you know, vibrant within our soul so that we can bring those energies into this earth plane so that we can um, accomplish the mission that we are here to do, to do or to, it's to, to fulfill our, um, the experiences that we want to have while we are here. So, and because these burn within our soul like flames, so it's like we can't avoid it. It's very hard to avoid it. That's why it is, it's described more as a flame. It's, it's, it's not something that is subtle. It is actually um, very, hmm, very definitive. So that's, that's kind of what um, sacred soul flames are. So hey, let me just get my, uh, notes first so um i just want to mention that i i do believe that we have all all the frequencies within us that's available to us even when we are here it's just that those particular ones that we that are um, before we come here we have selected to to play with are more um I would say we bring more of that energy in or we allow more of that energy to be flowed through to us. That's so we have, it's not like we, if we didn't bring that energy with us, we can't use it. We can't express it. We totally can. Um, and we, and, and it's, it's just that it is, um, it's something that we only, can access it a short period of time or not as we don't explore it as um, thoroughly as the ones that we have actually selected. So we have all the frequencies with us, within us and there are select, um, I would say a select couple of them that we actually have kind of promised um, made a, um, a point to explore while we are in incarnation this time. So we brought more of those energies with us. So it's easier and it's more available for our soul to actually um, work with those energies. And there are like so many different colors. Absolutely. Um, I don't even know how many there are. I just know that. What is relevant for Earth, uh, for people that are um, playing on Earth at this time, there are maybe about um, eight of them that is most common. Not that that's all they are. I think there are, there are definitely at least like 10, 15 of them. But the eight of them, we um, kind of majority of people, majority, not, not meaning 51%, but actually you know, 80, 90, maybe even 95% of the people on Earth are uh, um, uh, only those eight that I'm going to talk about this evening, hopefully get to talk about this evening and the, and the rest. There are so many other colors. Um, however, very few people would have them um, really for very special reasons and occasions with somebody play with the, somebody that has um, a lot of those um, other colors so that's and usually we it's very common for each person to 
have maybe two to three different sacred flames that they would play with, you know, um, a lot of times. I think nowadays, you know, maybe it's a bit more three, maybe you know, three is more common now. Whereas if you think back like 20, 30, or even 50 years, um, you know, just one or two, because um, just one or two of them, just because of the, the, the way the earth planet is um, at the moment, that the other flames, even if you have it, it's, it's not something that you can do much about. So um, nowadays, because the we are in the transition period into um, a, a different um, playground, so it's easier to have more of those. Like more people uh, are going to have um, like more of these sacred flames with them. So and so, let me just repeat the the eight ones I might have um missed one just then but the the flames kind of it's roughly the uh, the same as the the chakra roughly roughly not all of the chakra colors but they are kind of like those so red orange yellow green blue violet or purple so those are kind of interchange and then white and pink so those are the eight colors that I would be talking about today. Um, let's see. So any questions so far before I can continue? And you guys, so you, um, did I explain properly what soul flames are? Any questions so far? A uh, question that uh, the color is uh, well, so everybody, the uh, color in our body, the energy in our body, how to observe it? Um, okay, so the way it is, is that they are energies that come through us. Let's say red, let's say the first one is red. So the red, um, the red flame would come through us and when it hits our, so it comes through us through the top of our head, and when it hits our head, it comes through our uh, nervous system, and it does something to our nervous system so that we start to um, um, respond to it consciously and unconsciously. So it is, is it in our body? Well, I would say that it it passes through our body. And, uh, and it um, creates an effect to the body. Did I did I answer that for you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you for the question. Any other comments, questions so far? Okay, if not, I shall go on. One question here. Is this what uh, Sifu James was teaching? You, sh sh you showed us some charts with different colors. Is that the same thing? <laughs> um, so colors. No, I don't think so. No, no it's different. Okay. It's different, yes, it's different. Thank you. Yeah, it's different. Okay, so anyways. The, um, so the first one, red. So what does red, what does the, the, the red flame represent? Red flame is, as the color um, kind of suggests, it's a very assertive energy. So red always conjure up, you know, um, I would say it's a masculine energy and it's also very active go-getter. It's kind of a very, um, I would say, people that are in the that are strong with the red flame. They are. They have a strong mind, and they know what what is right for them, and they have no um, problem, you know, telling other people that they're wrong. So they they can speak their mind. And if something is not 
um, write according to them, they would have no problem speaking up and trying to do something about it. They they are not you know people that says can that can uh, observe something and allow things to you know go um, quietly. You no, know, if they find that something is it's not you know good or right according to them, they don't just speak up. They actually would take action to either um, you know um, stop it or at the very least change it some, somewhat to bring about changes. So these are really more of a revolutionary kind of um, personality that that's what they create. So uh, I, would, I would say a lot of the, the people that are here to change the, the world. So they would have a lot of these red colors with them. And they are not, it's changed the world, not in the way of, you know, let's meditate or let's, you know, go. Um, so no, it's, they are very forceful. They, they are action oriented and they are very um, grounded in that, you know, they, they are practical people and so they seek practical solution not so much a not so much a um spiritual person but definitely they have a sense of what's right and what's wrong like like domineering or um, um there's another term for the leader kind of yes i would say um yeah Definitely. <laughs> they, yeah. And so that's kind of, um, so I just want to go over some of the, the downside of this. That's, there's a good side because they are very assertive. They are here to change things. They, um, they, are, they, they really are practical and, and the world or the uh, society just does not work very well without this flame. So, however, um, can you please mute, mute yourself? Okay, thanks. So um, the, the downside to this is because these people are so action oriented. So when they are, you know, they always go, go, go. I'm going to, I'm going to move that mountain all by myself. So because they have that kind of mentality that is, it's actually, um, it's not hard for them to overextend and they they would kind of you know, just try to push things uphill all the way. And however, they tend to um, exhaust themselves. And it's, so that is really a drawback because that's, you can't really do everything by yourself, you can't shift the whole world by yourself. So, and if you try to do that without conserving your own energy, without being discriminate and focused. So, because, you know, they, they are so action oriented, they have a tendency to have like 10 different things going on at the same time and they are passionate about each one of them. And that's how they can easily, you know, really exhaust themselves. And that's not the best way to go about changing the world. It's really to focus on one thing at a time and to really um, you know, make enough change in that area with so you can actually do things without exhausting your own energy. So that's something for the red flame to think about, to really be aware of. Okay, so that's the red flame. The red flame is, a, as, as you imagine, is a very um, masculine energy. It's the go-getter, you know, I'm going to move the mountain by myself kind of energy. And the next one is the orange. So all, and opposed, as opposed to the red as being uh, masculine energy, the orange is very feminine energy. These are the people who like to be in the moment, they want to 
enjoy the good things in life. They are artists. They really enjoy harmony. They, they love beauty. And they are the ones that would take the time to smell the roses, you know, enjoy their cup of tea in the morning, enjoy classical music or at least um, like ballet, those kind of really you know, beautiful things in life. Um, so they, they need beauty. They need harmony. They need time to, to take time to enjoy these things. So they are the um, they are the more feminine energy. They kind of like the <clears throat> more um, mother energy, mother earth energy. If you can think of that, is they they like to you know, um, make the house beautiful. They like to surround themselves with beautiful things. They like to do crafts. They you know all those things. And they they love to take their time to appreciate. So they it's much easier for them to be in the moment to enjoy life. However, the downside to this this kind of energy is really because they are so in the moment, they so love to, you know, just enjoy everything. They don't like to exert um like forget about, you know having goals in their life. Goals in their life is just, you know, why? Because <laughs> they want to just savor the moment rather than, you know, work hard and aim for something, which is what the, the reds are good at. So the orange, well, the downside is that they really struggle to get things done. So they may have, they may be able to enjoy each moment, but if you want them to actually do something, accomplish something, um, to really go for lofty goals, um, I would say like go for like you know like the Olympics is people train like a lot of people train since they were young in order to get to the point where they can compete at the Olympics. But that's not something that an orange flame um, uh, is interested in at all. They're just they're interested in looking at the beauty of, of life. They're not interested in struggling and, and um, achieving things. They don't like nine to five things. They don't like structure. They don't like authority so much. It's not that they, they, they don't like authority. It's that they actually... They are their own authority. They look inward rather than look outside to achieve things. They their focus is inward rather than outward. So um, they may have a very they may have a very enjoyable life, but if you look at um, the, the the other side, is they don't get a lot of things done. So. Not that it's a bad thing, it's just that that's what the orange flame is about. So if you find that you have orange flame in your, um, like it's one of your, the flames that you are playing with, then you need to understand that, well, you know what, set expectations. If you expect yourself to, um, you know, have all these achievements and you have orange flame then well, maybe you need to think about what it is that's actually important okay so far so good okay so the next one is really the yellow flame the yellow flame um as the color yellow i know suggest is that the yellow is the divine child archetype. So they are happy, they're happy babies. They are full of life and it's like yellow is, is divine and it's also um, solar as well. Not that the sun is necessarily um, yellow, but it's, it's that kind of energy is that they are happy. They 
they are like the sun shining out. So they are their personalities that really draw people in because they are so sunny. They it's it's like they they would when they look at you when they um interact with you it feels like the sun is shining on you so of course that's um it really pulls people in so these are really the natural born leaders they don't even have to try it's just they, they just have that quality to attract people in and bring people in they are um they are really naturally good at a lot of things because they they have this you know, sunny um, and resourceful kind of energy about them, and and they are pretty good at achieving things, setting goals, and they have they usually have the um, smarts to go with it. So it, they are they are the they are the young early achievers. And um, so that is their, their, the, the good side of them. And the bad side is because they, they have all these things going on with them. So it's actually quite easy for them to get arrogant. They um, may have um, difficulty, you know, balancing their pride and, um, checking their own ego system in and and maybe they can come across as being you know just an arrogant egotistical person and that that is kind of um irritating as well as much as one hand they can draw you in but then when they go too much when they are you know, too full of themselves it, it can easily come across as being egotistical and it can turn people off and they are because they are so um richly endowed with you know all the the the, um, you know, the, the social graces and the smarts and all that so they actually can come as um like, like things come to them easily so they actually what um they have a strong will and so they try to push their will on other people as well so that is the downside of the yellow way so as you can imagine the yellow ray it's kind of more of a masculine energy and then the next one is the green ray the green ray are healers they are the healer archetype so those are the people that are absolutely compassionate, empathic. They are the ones that, you know, if they see you in trouble, they would, you know, give you the shirt off their back. They have no qualms about giving, giving, giving of themselves. And they are the animal lovers. They are the tree huggers. Um, and they a considerate, kind person, and they can really, they are, because they're so empathic, they can um, really put themselves in someone else's shoes. And because of that, they are very giving. They have no problem um, putting other people's needs before their own. So now those are the, those are wonderful qualities. But However, the downside is that they, because they are so giving, so they actually put themselves last. And that's not something that is sustainable. So just like the, the red ray, the green ray can get exhausted, exhausted because they give too much and they, they don't have anything left for themselves. And they don't even know that, um, that that's why they are the way they are, because they are just so giving. And the um, downside is they don't know how to balance. They don't know what balance is. They don't, they're not good receivers. They can give, 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 but they don't, like they have trouble receiving. It's like they kind of felt, oh God, I'm not good enough to receive. I am just here to give and heal everyone else. 
never mind about me. I am here for everyone else. So that is not sustainable. Um, maybe as a, as a soul, as a, um, as, a, as a soul, you can do that. But when you're in the physical body, when you're playing in the physical plane, you like give and take has to be in balance. Otherwise, you're going to suffer eventually. So that is the downside of the, the green ray. Okay, so just want to stop here for a bit. Um, any questions? Comments so far? Have, do you see yourself in one of these yet? There are four more to go. Hmm. How do we test ourselves? Which color we are? Or we just oh, go okay. by what is question? I forgot closest. to cover that. Um, <laughs> I would really suggest that you you um use pendulum. So just when you when you have a pendulum, you just kind of um ask like set up what is a yes what is a no and then you would just say do i have you know red in me so it's either yes or no then you find out whether you have red and then same goes for the orange yellow and the green so just just use that that would be the most um easiest way to do that does that help Yes, thank you. Okay, any other questions, comments? My, my question is that um, I am, I'm guessing that it's um, feminine, green is feminine, correct? Oh yeah. yeah. It's quite a feminine energy. And yes, we, uh, <laughs> I think because of the, the, the the field I'm in, I actually see I see a lot of green green flames. Oh, yeah, yeah, and um, oh, I definitely definitely know the uh, the downside of of the green flame. What's the difference between orange and yellow? Um. Orange and yellow, oh, oh, big difference. Orange are the um, artists. They like to savor every moment. Whereas the yellow, they are active. They, they are like, um, they are like a divine child. They are like, they're so full of life, full of enthusiasm. They are quick and they, um, it's like sunshine. They like sunshine. Just think of them as sunshine. You know, when when you know, I, I actually do know people like that. That when they are around, you just know that they are they they bring life to a party. Let's let's put it that way. They they are not frivolous, but they actually they 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 can be the life of a party. But they can also be an artist. <clears throat> I'm quite sure there are some artists that has the yellow flame in them, mm -hmm. but they don't. Um, it's not as easy for the yellow flame to be in the moment and just enjoy. Mm, okay. okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, great. Let's move on. So. So the next four are kind of more of the, we're getting into more spiritual flames, whereas the first four are more um, about the physical plane. So the next four are more um, spiritual qualities. So the first one of the spiritual quality is the blue flame. Blue flames are spiritual warriors. So they... They have strength, but it's not the same strength as the red ray or the or the yellow ray. Their strength is really um, spiritual strength. So they they just know, they just know 
it's like they actually remembered that they are spirit first and human and, and humans second. So they, they kind of remember that. So that's why they are they are usually very spiritual people and they they have this integrity about them that um they are normally really honest and they they value truth they value justice they they are they like to analyze they like to um strategize and they um they're very disciplined but it's not the discipline to achieve any um i would say material goals their, their discipline is to achieve spiritual goals so it's a little bit like the red but totally in the spiritual realm and their mission they are very um goal oriented but it's goal it's spiritual goal that they're after so um, they can they can overcome a lot of difficulties to go after their own mission, and so and they actually they don't have the they don't have the I would say that the softness that the love lovey dovey kind of it's spiritual, but it's not the lovey dovey kind of spiritual. It's the um, truth honesty and discipline and strength of um, faith that kind of um, energy so it's kind of like a, a masculine energy as well be, because they are so analytical about something they are analytical in that they want to actually understand you know why someone else would choose to act that way so that they can influence them to um, bring out the the, the 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 spirituality in someone else so that is their strength is to really they have, they make great teachers they make great um yeah I, I would say that they they really make great preachers and teachers because they have that analytical part of it and they know how to um lead people in a in a very cerebral way they don't have the charm of the 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 yellow ray but they because they are so focused on knowing what's going on beneath the surface understanding the the, the human psyche that it actually makes them um, good leaders in that way so the drawbacks of the blue flame is that they are because they are so analytical and mission oriented that and and they um they get they focus on the mission is that you know they um they lack the the, um, the social charm of the the yellow race so that's why sometimes in order to achieve their mission and their goal, they some they sometimes can leave um, you know, the collateral damages. Like they may they may be very they may be great teachers and coach other people, but they may forget about the their loved ones at home. So those are so that's what I mean by those are collateral damages because they are focused on their mission. So they forgot that, oh, okay, I actually need to take care of my own family too. Because for them, it's all about their mission. Their mission is spiritual goals and it's not about um, material things. So that, so the material side, relationship side that can and often does suffer because they are so not of this world. <laughs> let's, so let's, let's put it that way. So that is the blue flame. And um, the, the thing is, you know, you need to remember that, yes, there you do have a soul mission and you are also here to live a human life as well. So um, don't try to save the world and forget that your own house is burning down. So you have to, it, 
it needs to, you need to take care of both sides. Okay, that's the blue flame. And then there is, the blue flame is kind of more the masculine and then the violet flame or violet or purple, so kind of kind of lumps them together because violet is just a more, uh, more um, redder hue of purple. Purple is more on the blue side. So the violet, I would just call it the violet. So the, the violet is um, a little bit like the, the orange. However, um, the orange is a very feminine energy, whereas the violet is a, a more refined and wiser feminine energy. So still, and the, the violets are more introspective. They really cherish their inner world and they prioritize their own inner world. Um, they are very aware of energy. They are aware of their own Akashic record. They love harmonious things as well. They, they like, um, because they, they cherish their own inner world. So their home is their sanctuary. So they would make sure that their home is something that is comfortable for them, that is meaningful to them. So, so that's, um, and also the violet um, is, they have very refined taste as well, kind of similar to the orange, very refined taste, refined, um, more aristo, aristocratic as well. So you won't find them with, you know, mm, I would say neon colors. They would be more of a subtle color, more of, um, you know, those more mute tones in their surroundings. It, it would be, um, so that, that is more their kind of what's beauty for them. And the the downside of the violet, the violet flame is that they, because their own um, preference is so refined, they may find it hard to get along with other energies like the red energies or, or the, the yellow energies. They may find them to be too crude, um, too common, so, and um, even though they are very, I would say, tuned in person as well, so they, they, they may not, you know, cut those, those more crude people out, however, being with those people can drain them very easily, and, and just things that um, a, you know, uh, a, a I would say a more um, normal person would have would have no problem with with um, it would be hard for the the violet flames because they they have such a refined sense that like looking at things that are disharmonious or people that are behaving um, crudely is just it's like it takes them out of their comfort zone so much that it is hard for them to um, feel comfortable. And so they, it's, it's, it's much easier for them to retreat back into their own environment or in, in an environment that they can control more. So they tend to be more, um, I would say, they keep to themselves, so they, like, it's easier for them to feel lonely because their own unique sense of what what is, um, I would say, what is supportive and nurturing for them is so far different from the others that they that they have to spend a lot of their resources, their time to to kind of um, protect themselves. So, and so because of that, the, the, it's, 
probably a good idea to for the um violet flames people to build up their own inner sense because when you are around people that are especially when they're younger when you're around everyone else that that kind of reflect back to you that you know you are different so it's for a young person it's actually not easy for them to to live with the violet flame because they would feel like you know this is not my world Everything is just, they don't feel they fit in. So it's very hard for them, especially when they, um, when they are awakened to their own violet flame when they are young. So it's um, hopefully later on in life when they, when they get more of a chance that they can build up their own, they can really um, accept who they are rather than thinking that there is something wrong with them and they need to be like others more. No, <laughs> that's actually not what they are here for. They are here to actually elevate other people, to introduce these, um, I would say, more refined um, sense of beauty and sense of, of what life can be. That's what they are here to do, is to elevate others, not to sink to everyone's level. So um, they, it's, they, it's, it's really um, much easier for them as they get older to, to set their boundaries for themselves, to really acknowledge, you know, what's, that they are not, um, they're not strange, they are not deficient. Actually, that's what they are here to do. They are here to elevate others rather than trying to think that there there's something wrong with. Them. So that is the violet ray. And the next two are even you know, even more spiritual. <laughs> Next one is the white, the white flame. These are the pure souls. They are idealists. They are eternally optimistic. They have a direct line to source consciousness. They remember, they know what source. They are very in tune with source energy. And that actually is a good thing because they are, they are, um, they it's actually easier for them than the violet ray. The, I'm not saying that the violet ray does not have um, a, a direct line to source, but it's, they're not as strong as the, the white flame. The white flame are, they are planetary healers. They are here to elevate the whole world. They are here to anchor in higher energies. So they are actually, um, they are here. Usually the people that have this white flame, they are more, uh, they are looked at, like when they are at their, when they are at, when they are actually doing their work, they can be looked at as um, somebody with um, like, like Jesus, Yeshua kind of energy. But they have this, pure, purest, idealist, and uh, faith, unshakable faith, because they, they don't just remember, they know, they know that, you know, there is a creator, and they know they're in tune with what is sacred, what is divine, and they, that's why, and they also know that they are here to shift the energy, so it's actually um, quite a powerful energy as well. And <clears throat> the drawbacks to the white flame is that, you know, um, especially when they're younger, when they're not quite at the extent where they fully understand and can wield the, the, the power of the white flame, that is when they kind of because they know that you know whatever that they sense around them is not 
it's not um, what it's supposed to be. It's so far away from the the purity and the um, divinity that each one actually has. It's it's hard for them to take. To, it's hard for them to um, survive in the world because what they are here to do is going against the the current. So they can get, uh, especially if they don't have family members that are understanding, it's not easy for them. And like when they're young and they're not, um, they haven't quite begun their work yet, that's when it's the hardest for them. And it's quite challenging to, to find that grounding. So it may be easier for them to seek, um, no, to to retreat. So unlike the the violet um, flames, they like to retreat within their their own home. The um, the white flames because they have so much more connection, and they and and the contrast when they are living life in in this um, reality that they tend to seek um, escapes, whether the escape is, you know, um, being in the fantasy world, um, you know, go and play games, like um, video games, or maybe even take drugs that is going to, so that's the kind of danger that the um, white flames can get into is because they're, um, job is so not easy and there is such a disparate energy between the white flame and you know regular reality on earth that they when they are not sure of themselves when they are not mature enough it's easy for them to try to escape and the, the escape that they find may not be the best for them in the long run. So that is the white flame. Um, and then the pink, pink flame is the last one. Pink flames are kind of the newer energies. Um, actually, both white and pink are the newer energies. The pink is even newer than the, the white ones. The pink ones, the, the white ones is here to anchor in divinity, to anchor in oneness. Whereas the pink is here as a planetary healer for emotions. So that's why they are very good with, they, are, they have a wide range of emotions. They, they have depth of emotions. They, they can be very high level or they can go as deep as you know, anyone cares to go. They have wide range emotionally. They can suffer so much more. And that is part of their strength because they are here to anchor in this. Um, they're here to actually anchor in cosmic love. And so emotionally, they are much more mature than the, the other flames. And I think it is the, um, the violet and, and also the green flame and can take on other people's energy, whereas the pink, they can take on other people's energy as well, but they are also good at um, broadcasting their own energy. And so that's what they are here to do is to broadcast their own energy. So and they are sensitive in a way because they can receive, they can actually be empathic and know what other people are feeling. However, they take it one step further. They can sense what other people are feeling and then they can actually if whatever it is that other people need in order for them to um, 
to, to balance other people's energies, their own emotions. So that is a pink flame that is mature, is that they are here to anchor in the emotions um, of cosmic love, of peace, joy. So those are the, um, the strength of a, a mature pink flame. So that's what they are here to explore as to how to get themselves ready to the, the point where they don't just take on other people's feeling. They can actually transmute it and give back their the remedy for other people to cleanse other people's emotions just by their presence. They don't actually have to do anything. It's just by their own presence. They can actually transmit their own energies to transform the world. So that's why... Um, when there is so much unrest in this world, the pink rays are so needed right now to really um, transmute all this chaotic, emotional, and crazy energies to back into something that is um, much more conducive to ascension. And um, so the the downside to the pink rays, if you are pink ray, is that because you are here to learn about emotions, how to transmute emotions. So that's why it's not uncommon for these people to have suffered emotional trauma, because that's part of their journey, is to work with their own emotional trauma first, to transmute it so that they can actually know how to heal other people's emotions. So that's why um, the part of the, the, the journey for the pink ray is they need to heal their own emotional trauma first. And also um, kind of like the, the, the white flame, the, the white ray, is that because there's, they are here to shift um, planetary emotions. So they are kind of also going against the grain as well. It's like they are going uphill, just like the, the white rays are. They're going uphill. So it's part of their own um, growth journey is to mm -hmm. let go of the... Um, you know, is, is to actually let go of um, thinking that, okay, everybody is against me because you know, nobody is like me. How come other people are, uh, 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 they love drama so much. They are always up and down, whereas um, a more mature person with pink ray is that they can actually calm themselves down to a level where they can, no matter what is thrown at them, they can actually flow and transmit the, uh, the frequency of energy of cosmic love that they are here to share with the whole world. So that is the, um, I would say the, the genius and also the, the uphill battles that the pink ray is here to experience and learn and expand. So those are the eight rays. Questions, comments? Um, I'm Assuming that the white is masculine, pink is feminine, or does it not, at this level, you don't have that? It does, uh, yes, in a way it is, you're right. The white is more of a masculine because it's more of an analytical 
and right. the cerebral energy, whereas the, the pink is a feeling energy. And we usually um, associate feelings with more of a feminine energy. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, one other thing. Can you give an example of somebody with uh, white and pink flame? Or well, maybe you already said Jesus for white flame. Yeah. But what yeah. about uh, pink flame? Pink flame. Um, okay. Well, I, I'm definitely a pink flame. Okay. Um, let's see. Who else do I know is a pink flame? Hmm. Hmm. I'm just trying to think of more of the um, more of the well-known people I, I know that I um, I can't. Sorry, I can't think of anyone else. Okay. okay. And for violet flame. Um... Who can you think of? Violet flame. Um, let's see. Violet. Um, yep, I do know. I know somebody that is more of the violet, but I don't think you guys know them. Um, okay. No. I, I think Chella is one. Chella Farrell. Um, she is somebody that uh, teaches with um, Richard Bartlett. Okay. So that's um, so. So for for me, she's somebody who has that okay my last question is that um spirits like um Kuan Yin or Saint Germain or people like that are they um I mean oh, okay actually Kuan Yin is probably um I definitely a, a, I would say a violet ray as well Okay. Any of the arch angels, archangels, are they? Uh... Um, I would say the four. Oh, okay. So pink, you can think of um, um, Archangel Shamayel as being a pink ray as well because um, it's about cosmic love okay okay and uh, archangel michael is more of a blue it's right this, yes it's that strong masculine energy that is so it's more of um very strategic analytical kind of energy And I guess um, Raphael is green because he's the healer. Oh, he's the healer. Yep. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for thank you for the question. Yes, I forgot about the the archangels. <laughs> but as I mentioned, is that we actually all we have all the colors. We have we actually have all the colors. If you think of, oh, well, I don't have a red ray or, you know, I don't have a yellow. So that's why I don't have, I don't have that um, bubbly personality. You can, like, if that is so, uh, you have that. It's just that you didn't bring a lot of those energy, but that does not mean you cannot um, draw on that. If that is what you wish to transform yourself into then yes you can totally um bring that part of yourself out i'm quite sure it's actually um 
it would be very beneficial to do that as well. How would you do that? Let's say that you want to bring in, you know, whatever, more and more blue or more violet. How would you do that? I would, okay. It's actually just a choice. It's mm. like we have all the colors, not just these eight. They're like there's yellow, there's silver, and there's gold, there's silver. So there are all the, the, the other colors that I haven't even talked about. Mm -hmm. So it's like we, and we have a whole range of them. If there is some particular um, characteristics that you want is, you know, yes, we, we, everybody has a, a character. We have a persona, but that persona is not cast in stone. You can expand. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is just focus on, okay, I, I want to focus on being gregarious i want to focus on being the the, the you know have, having that bubbly personality so yeah you just have to focus on that and um, give yourself permission to start to develop that part of your energy because no matter how introvert a person you are there are yeah, I'm quite sure that there are people that you resonate with. So you just have to um, give yourself the permission that, okay, I want to talk to everyone else, just like I can talk to, you know, that particular person that resonates with me. So we, we can do that. Okay. And uh, just to complete the last question, um, Archangel Gabriel and Uriel, what are the colors for those? Do you know? No, okay. Um, Gabriel is more about let's see, let's see. Um, Gabriel is more white. Okay. More white. It feels like it's more white. Uriel, I'm not sure. I, I don't know Uriel too well. Okay. 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 Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions? Comments? Okay. So just in summary, um, I want to just um, remind everyone is no matter what race you have, with you that um, is knowing is to know that yes um, each ray has the upside and the, the the challenges with it so when you know about your own rays or uh, usually there's more than one that you play with is to kind of gauge how um, each one of them what are the, the the parts of them that you want to bring out and also to avoid the pitfalls of the um of the the the, the downside of each ray because it's those the, all the rays have their own um they have their own place it's not that one is better or you know higher or or anything like that. Even if I, when I mentioned that the the first four is more material, and the last four is more um, spiritual gifts. However, that's nothing wrong with the material. We all need material things. We still need a roof over our head and and all that. And there's nothing wrong with the spiritual, even though we um, the spiritual is not as practical. 
However, if you don't have the spiritual side, it's like you, it's easy to get lost and get, um, and really lose, like to chase after just material things. Um, at some point, it, at some point you will feel empty if, if all you're doing is chasing after material things. And so when you actually have both, like all the gifts, when you actually have both the, the material side and the spiritual side, it actually strengthens. That's what being human, that's what being having a body is about is balance. Because if you're not balanced, then um, you won't be able to do your job, whatever the mission you are, when you come here quite easily. And also when you figure out the, the rays that you kind of um, resonate with most, it kind of gives you some idea why you're here, what you're here to do. So for those who are trying to, um, and I think a lot of people would need to do that sooner or later, because as the energies change, our the, the, the mission that we have had when we, um, when we are playing in the old energy is bound to switch over to the new energy. So you definitely need to um, find a new, a new venue for yourself to express each. The, the rays, they always have a, a higher expression and I'm not saying that, you know, if you are a pink ray or a white ray, then you are here to be someone like a Jesus to save the world. No. Um, it's, it's just that when you have that, it means that you, um, that that is something should you choose to, you can express. And we are here just to learn each of the rays, the, the rays that we've brought with us. And that does not mean that, you know, we can figure it out in this lifetime. These rays, a lot of times we actually have, we, we play with the same set of rays over many lifetimes. As the first lifetime, if you have a white ray, you may not be able to do anything. Maybe all you can do is just um, feel disheartened because what you know and what you're seeing around you is so different that you just feel totally out of place. So it may take us several lifetimes for you to actually get to the point where you remember, oh, I'm not just here to be like everyone else. I'm here to anchor in something different. So it this, like, even if you think you don't have a white ray, it, it may not be that you, it's not that you don't have it. It's just that you have it, but you are just, learning to explore and be able to use that particular ray to the fullest extent. And that can take many years, many lifetimes. So um, if you're at all curious about why you're here, what you're doing here, then one of the ways that you can start by doing is really, you know, doing some pendulum work to figure out which ones which are the rays that you're actually here to play with and see how where you're at um, in terms of exploring each of those rays. And um, if, you want, if you want to accentuate one of the, the rays, then have fun with it. And if you actually want to play with a ray that you don't have currently, also, wonderful as well because as I mentioned we are shifting energies we the our playground is being upgraded so choose whatever it is that resonate with you and just explore it even if you don't think you have it it doesn't mean you can't start to look into it just be curious that's all I have to say
Thank you, everybody.